The robot uses a camera to locate the position of the ball on the platform and can move it in various ways. This project encapsulates the essence of image processing, inverse kinematics, electronics, and other technologies that are important in robotics. Today, I will share with you the entire process of building a ball balancing robot using a camera. I have recently been assigned to a high-speed vision lab. I will be doing my graduation research in this lab, and I realized that I had never built a camera-based robot before. So I decided to make a visual servo ball balanced robot for my own study. Wow. So what do you need to make a ball balanced robot? A device that can freely control the tilt of the platform, a sensor to acquire the position of the ball, algorithm to bring the acquired ball position closer to the target position. These are the body, eyes, and brain of the robot respectively. First, let's consider the robot's body. How many degrees of freedom are needed to tilt the platform 360 degrees in any direction? The answer is two. If the platform can tilt in two directions, x-axis direction and y-axis direction, it can tilt freely 360 degrees by combining them. There is a principle that the number of actuators is equal to the number of degrees of freedom of the robot. In this case, the number of motors required for the robot is two. In this project, however, we will add another degree of freedom by using three motors, which will allow the platform to move up and down in addition to tilting. This will even allow the ball to jump. What kind of mechanism is needed to achieve such movement with only three motors? One answer is the 3RPS parallel manipulator. This mechanism has three legs leading from the platform to the motors, and each leg consists of two links. The links are connected to each other by pin joints, and the links are connected to the platform by ball joints. Such a mechanism allows the tilt and height of the platform to be controlled by the rotation angle of the motor. Next, let us consider the inverse kinematics of this mechanism. Inverse kinematics is the calculation of the rotation angles of the motors to achieve the desired posture of the robot. In the case of this project, we are trying to determine how many degrees each of the three motors should rotate to achieve the height of the platform and its normal vector. The derivation is not shown in this video because it is time consuming, but it can be done by solving a series of equations for a plane, a sphere, and a line in three dimensions. It is not difficult, but it required a certain amount of patience to actually solve the equations. Oh my God! Inverse kinematics could also be obtained, so we started designing with 3D CAD. We were particular about the design, which actively used the golden ratio to create a beautiful design and kept it to a compact size. The wiring and other parts were barely visible, and we were able to create a refined and lean appearance. The electronic devices used are also introduced here. First, we used Raspberry Pi 5 as the main brain of the robot. The V1 camera module was used as a sensor to locate the position of the ball, and the RS304MD was used as a motor to move the platform. Now, let's print the model with a 3D printer, Remove the support material from the printed part and wash off the resin on the surface. After preparing the surface with sandpaper, spray paint the surface with color. This completes the preparation of the part. Next, start the assembly. Fix the motor to the base and attach the link to the motor. The motor can now transmit power to the link. Place a bearing at the end of the link and attach another link. This type of joint is called a pin joint and can rotate around a single axis of rotation. A ball joint is attached to the end of a link the ball joint can rotate around a single point, attach the platform. A transparent acrylic plate is used so that the position of the ball can be observed by a camera from under the platform. Let's test if it works properly. Nice. Finally, connect the motor and camera wires to Raspi and the robot is complete create a program based on inverse kinematics and check the operation. The tilt of the robot is well controlled. This completes the construction of the robot's body. Next, let's consider the second necessary element for ball balancing, the robot's eyes. In order to keep the ball on the platform, the robot needs to know where the ball is on the platform. Various sensors can be used to achieve this, but in this project, we will use a camera. 
The camera mounted on the robot produces the following image at approximately 60 FPS. Since the ball is pink in color, the coordinates of the ball are obtained by finding the center of gravity of the pink area in the image. This kind of processing can be implemented very easily using OpenCV, a computer vision library. In this project, the coordinates of the ball were obtained in the following way. In order to obtain an accurate position of the ball that is robust to noise. First, all pink areas in the image are selected. Assuming that the largest of these areas is the ball, find the smallest circle that can enclose the entire area. If the diameter of the circle does not exceed the threshold value, it is considered to be noise and ignored. Thus, we can see that the coordinates of the ball are accurately captured. Now that the platform tilt can be freely controlled and the ball coordinates can be accurately obtained, the last thing needed for ball balancing is an algorithm to move the ball to the target coordinates. Suppose the following image is acquired by the camera. The ball's location is at these coordinates, and the target coordinates are here. To move the ball to the target coordinates, the platform should be tilted in this direction. To move the ball closer to the target coordinates more quickly, the tilt should be steeper when the ball is farther away from the target coordinates. This is called proportional control and can be expressed in the following equation. This can be called ball position-based control. However, this is not enough. What? For example, when an image like this is acquired, one might think that the ball's position is so close to the target coordinates that it is not necessary to tilt the platform much. But what if the ball has a large velocity in this direction? In order to stop the ball's velocity, you will need to tilt the platform in the opposite direction of the velocity. But how do you get the ball's velocity? If the left side image was acquired one step earlier and the right side image is now acquired, we can determine the ball's velocity by dividing the change in the coordinates by the time. This is called differential control. This can be called control based on the ball's velocity. However, this is still not enough. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. And there is one more thing to consider. An image like this was acquired. The ball is very close to the target coordinates, and its velocity is zero. That is, the ball has stopped very close to the target coordinates. This is because the ball's coordinates are so close to the target that the output from the proportional control is so small that it cannot be large enough to change the ball's position. This phenomenon is called steady state deviation. Integral control is the control that solves this steady state deviation. As the name suggests, it accumulates minute differences between the coordinates of the ball and the target coordinates and tilts the platform according to the accumulated amount. The formula is shown below. The combination of these three controls is the PID control, which is the algorithm used in this project. The coefficients in front of each term are the most important. These are called P-gain, I-gain, and D-gain, respectively. In the case of ball balancing, there are two coordinates, X and Y. Therefore, PID control is applied in the X-axis and Y-axis directions, respectively, to obtain the output, which is then combined to obtain the direction of the platform tilt and the magnitude of that tilt. Now, all the elements necessary for a ball-balanced robot are in place. All that remains is to patiently adjust the PID gains through repeated testing. As a result of continuous adjustment, the robot is now able to successfully balance the ball as shown here. The next challenge is to move the ball freely on the platform. Sounds difficult? Actually, it is not that difficult. Since the algorithm to move the ball to the target coordinates is already completed, all you have to do is change the target position to the desired location. For example, move it in a straight line. Next, move it in a circle. Then move it to a square. The final task was to bounce the ball on the platform. As it turned out, we could not succeed in this project. The algorithm for making the ball jump is a long story for another time, but the reason may be the insufficient frame rate of the camera. The control period of 60 FPS was too slow for the falling speed of the ball, and it was difficult to find the best timing to launch the ball. 
I would like to try this ball balancing again eventually, but this is the end of this project. How was it? All 3D models and programs created in this project can be downloaded from GitHub. If you would like to try making your own models and deepen your understanding, please take on the challenge. See you again in the next project. Thanks for taking a look. If you like it, please subscribe.